This is a gimbal. Specifically, this is the Xiaoyun Weibo 3S, and this is what today's video is going to be about. So firstly, full disclosure, Xiaoyun did send this out to me to review, but all of the thoughts in this video about this gimbal are my very own. Now I've been using this for a couple of weeks now. Now I've got to say, coming from somebody who's been exclusively using DJI gimbals for the past couple of years, I have a lot to say. But first, let's talk about the music you're hearing in the background in this video, because this video is sponsored by Artlist. Because finding the right music and assets for your video can be such a challenge. And that's why I use Artlist for all of my content. They have a massive library of royalty-free music, sound effects, templates, and even stock footage. Seriously, it saved me so many hours of time and so much headache it's so easy to find exactly the type of music and assets that fit your video, and you can even have AI suggest the best bit for you. Plus, Artlist Max Pro gives you access to their entire library and collections. And this is absolutely amazing for any content creator because you've got everything all in one place. So if you're tired of struggling to find the right assets and music for your videos, then click the link in the description below, head over to artlist.io and get two months extra free when you sign up for any annual plan. Join now and elevate your content to the next level. Like all my videos, this isn't gonna be a technical specification video. So instead, I'm gonna be sharing my real world practical thoughts after using this gimbal for a couple of weeks now. There are a couple of key features of this gimbal that do really stand out. Now, firstly, it's this thing. Now this is a quick releasable sling handle. It isn't that fantastic. This is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love how quickly you can put this on and off the gimbal. Like, look at that, that was it, done. Now, if you don't want to use that again, just flick this switch here and then slide it off. And there you go, you've got a, you've got a very nice small compact gimbal in your hand. Now this sling arm is fantastic. Now it's built in or practically built in in a quick release fashion. Not only that, but you can just release that, make it bigger, look at that. Lock it back in and there you go. You've got an extended sling arm, which is amazing for getting all types of unique shots. Very, very handy to have a sling arm kind of built on, but that's not the only thing that this thing does. There's one other thing that I absolutely love. Because for added stability, you can actually do this. So again, take a switch, and then you can put it into two-handed mode, and this adds so much more stability to a lot of your shots. And for me, this has been absolutely magic. Like, it's so useful to have something without having to buy or add additional attachments or buy a whole kind of additional rig to it. You just have this two-handed mode right there, and then if you want to turn it into a sling, no hassle, just slide it across, and you've got, there you go, sorry, wrong switch, and then you've got your kind of overhand sling or under sling mode or whatever you want to call it. So that's number one. That's feature number one. That unique sling grip that you've got. Number two is this. Look at this. Look at this guy. This is, I don't know if you can see that. That is amazing. This is a wrist dress. And it's a, an improved wrist dress from what I've seen on previous models. I've never owned a Xiaomi Weeble gimbal or crane or any of the Xiaomi's gimbals before. So for me, this is quite, this is quite nice and unique because this means that I've got something to rest my wrist on. Essentially what it's for is a wrist rest, right? And not only that, you can actually, let me just show you, you can actually just take that and raise it or lower it however you want, like however you find it comfortable. You can just kind of hold like that. So if you're gonna be using this for long periods of time, and I shoot weddings, so this is very handy for me. And having that wrist rest just makes it so much easier for you to hold the gimbal for ages, use it for ages, and without your arms getting uber uber tired. So that's two very cool features. The third very cool feature is it's got this fill light, which I really like because if you just hold it down, I hope I'm not blinding you guys, I'm just gonna kind of twist it to the side here. Um, you can, look how bright that, that's so bright. Like if I take that and I put it on, look at that, that's extremely, extremely bright. Um, I think a thousand nits is what the um, specs say. I'll put the actual value up on the screen because I'm not sure whether it is a thousand. So I'm gonna put that down because I don't want to be blinding you guys. It also has a CCT mode, I think. So if we just press that, I can change the color temperature of this from going from 5600 Kelvin all the way down to 2600 Kelvin. So you can see how nice and warm that gets. And you've got that back up to 5600 Kelvin. You've got the little uh, switch, um, not switch, dial kind of thing here, which you can use to toggle it and that's really handy in low light situation now that's three really really useful features but there's a fourth feature that i want to mention and that is what i can actually do is right now cameras in horizontal mode and i go 
I can slide the side of this off and then just turn it around. And look at that. You've got instant vertical mode, which is really, really handy. So you can go from horizontal to vertical in no time, rebalance it quite easily, and then you're good to shoot your vertical videos for Instagram Reels, TikTok, whatever it is. So that's extremely handy because with social media the way it is, you might want to be filming a lot of vertical content as well, but at the same time switching between horizontal and vertical depending on what you're shooting and what your scenario is and not having to completely rebalance the gimbal all over again or add a camera rig to it, add additional weight again, you know, all of that faff. So instead, what you can do is just go from horizontal to vertical really easily. It takes minimal rebalancing and you're good to go. So yeah, now I've, I've just put it back to horizontal because you're well balanced. I um, just want to keep it that way. Now you've also obviously got options like Bluetooth, shutter control, um, tilt follow, you know, controlling all of your tilt follow axis. You've got this nice little LCD screen here, which kind of helps you see where your, all your modes are and change all your settings. And then you've also got the mobile app, which helps you control the settings and remotely control the gimbal as well, if you need to do that. Now, what are my thoughts after using it for a couple of weeks? Now, one of the things that I actually did use it for a lot apart from taking lots of shots of my setup for Instagram and things like that. I used it during a day out where I went and did some car spotting down in Mayfair, London. Um, car spotting, if those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically where you kind of just basically walk around the roads and look out for fancy or nice looking cars and take photos or in my case, record videos. Of them. A lot of that kind of up on my Instagram and my YouTube shorts and my TikTok, all my short form platforms. Um, I've already featured a lot of the, the kind of stuff that I've taken on there. And I used the gimbal quite a lot during that day, out and about on the streets, taking videos um, of those cars. But one of the other things we were able to do that day is we went to the Lotus showroom, um, so Lotus cars in Mayfair, and they very kindly let us in, do some filming of their showroom cars. And that was a really good experience because that actually let me use the gimbal quite a lot to take some really cool shots of the cars and test out some of the features of this gimbal, using it with or without the sling, using it with the lights um, to kind of add extra effects, and also using other features like the vortex mode, and just let me play around and experience the gimbal a lot. Now, what are my thoughts after using it for things like this? Personally, I absolutely love it because this thing is so good. It's extremely smooth, the motors are really strong, it can handle really good payloads. Now, right now, I've got a very, very light payload here. I've got the Sony ZV-E10 with a Samyang 24mm f2.8 lens, which is a tiny, very light plasticky lens. So, you know, what it's got on here is absolutely no problem at all. But this gimbal can actually handle the weight of something like my Sony a7S III with a, maybe a Tamron 28-75 or the Sony a7S III with the 24-105 f4 and it does a dream of handling it with weight like that which from a gimbal which is actually relatively small and compact not as small as Giant's Crane M range but for a gimbal that can hold that kind of a weight it's pretty small and compact and that's actually something I've been really wanting and I did consider some of the other gimbals out there such as the DJI RS3 Mini since Giant was kind enough to send this out to me I gave me the opportunity to test this gimbal out and for things like social media, for things like even a lot of professional grade work, this thing is absolutely fantastic. Being slightly smaller, it's also significantly lighter. It's got a good grip to it, and it's got all of these extra features like this sling and the wrist rest. It felt really good to use, and using it with the wrist rest meant that my arms weren't getting tired. And all I can say is that the footage that came out of it as a result was very stable, very smooth, and I wasn't expecting any less, to be honest, but I was pleasantly surprised at how well this thing performed and how much I actually enjoyed using it because I've not used many other gimbals from other companies. My, my main gimbal has been this guy. Well, I just can show you. My main gimbal for a couple of years has been this guy, which as you can already see, is significantly larger. This is the RS2, DJI RS2. It's a significantly larger package and it's already with the camera on this thing feels lighter than this in my hand right now. So you can kind of already just put that down, but you can already sense from me that having a nice lightweight gimbal with a lightweight package on it is really handy, especially for content creation. So that's who I would really recommend this for. And I think I'm gonna be using this a heck of a lot more moving forward because 
I've just really enjoyed using it. Now there are a couple of things about the gimbal that I did find slightly difficult or I might just not be familiar with it, um, but these could be possible improvements that Jaim could make. Uh, number one is their LCD. It's great, it's great to have a nice controllable LCD. However, if you would make this a little bit bigger with a touchscreen compatibility, um, then that would be really, really helpful because um, having a touchscreen LCD on your gimbal just makes life so much easier. And it might just be me being very used to being able to use DJI's touchscreen. That's why my complaint comes and it's not a problem for anybody else. But personally, I find that having that screen there be a touchscreen just makes that much difference. Now the other thing is some of the locking mechanisms could probably do a little bit of work because um, especially with these kind of twisty ones here like uh, you've got here, like that thing, that hits the base plate a lot, especially for in vertical mode. This is I think used mainly for vertical mode. But if you see like this is hitting the base plate there. Like if I show you like this here, this is hitting the base plate. And then what you have to do is you have to kind of pull it out Put it back in and then twist it again yes that's fine but when you're on the go and you want to make a quick change from vertical to horizontal having to kind of twist that like that is quite annoying so either separate where the base plate sits from this that would be one thing or just change the way that this locking mechanism works because this did annoy me a lot because i did try and go from vertical to horizontal quite a few times and i had to kind of adjust this and that was the most niggliest part of using the gimbal. The rest of them are generally okay, um, but yeah, this this one, yeah, you gotta, you gotta change that because that, that was such an annoying. Now, I know that this is probably because it's one of the more compact of the gimbal ranges, but um, having the options to add additional mount accessories would also be really, really helpful. Just in case you wanna add like an additional monitor mount or something like that. So overall, I really enjoyed using the Jaguar Weevil 3S, and it, for me, it's a really, really good compact run and gun gimbal and pretty much exactly what I was looking for in terms of using for my content creation because I do want to do a lot more outdoor content and especially for YouTube and I don't want to be carrying around with me a big bulky gimbal so something like this would be absolutely fantastic. I'd also consider getting the Shion Crane M3S which is again even more compact than this and probably going to be even better for something like that but hey Giant, if you want to send one of those out to me to test then I'd be more than happy to do that. That's all there is to it for now. I am gonna use this a lot more and I'm gonna try and bring you a couple of more videos showcasing what this thing can do out in the field and in kind of real life situations and maybe a couple of tutorials as to um, how you can get really smooth, good looking B-roll footage with a gimbal and kind of some unique, nice gimbal shots um, in various situations and scenarios. So, so keep a lookout for that. That's definitely coming up on the channel. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. So until next time, this is Kai24. Signing out.